Oh, well, hello. The topic of this video is boundaries and your work environment. From the survey, you guys work in a variety of different settings, let's call them, right? So it could have a home-based office, you could be a solopreneur, you could be service-based, sort of dealing with the public, you can own your own business, you can work for someone else, you can work in the corporate world. No matter what it is that you said that you did for a living or how you're making money right now, you had a lot of similar boundaries, issues. So let me tell you what those were, and then we'll move on to things that you can do to make changes. So a big one was that you said you don't have a lot of work-life balance, that you're having trouble separating working, especially those of you who have been working from home, and your actual life, and just feeling like you don't have balance in general. Most people were overworking as opposed to underworking, but that still, e either one of those um, ends of the spectrum are not healthy for you. Um, a lot of you were overcommitting, saying yes when you actually don't have the capacity to do the thing. So you're taking on too much or you're spending an inordinate amount of time on things because you feel like you suffer from perfectionism and you're doing something and then doing it over and doing it over. One of the biggest complaints you had was an inability to say no. Whether it's saying no to a coworker, whether it's saying no to a client, whether it's saying no to a boss, saying no to additional projects, being assertive about what you can actually do or what is not your job to do. Because a lot of you were working on teams and people sort of sloughing their work off onto you, asking if you could help and you feeling like you had to say yes, even though you don't want to. Or saying no and then worrying about it, ruminating about it, being like, ugh, what does this mean that I said no? The feelings that you shared in your work environment is just not really feeling appreciated. Those of you who have bosses, many of you feel undervalued by your boss, feel taken advantage of, don't feel good enough, like you're not doing a good enough job, being super afraid of failure. And, you know, when it comes to success and failure, because believe it or not, we can have fear of success as well. Fear of success, fear of failure are basically two sides of the same coin. And that coin is fear of change. So do we have to do something different, like set boundaries where we're not now, that is going to kick up a lot of fear, even if it means in doing that, you will be more successful or feel more peaceful. Speaking up in the way of letting people know what you need to actually do your job. Those of you who are delegating to others are saying that you're not great at delegating, that you're micromanaging in a way that you wish that you weren't. Another big one was time management, right? Just finding it challenging to stop working on time. So many of you are checking emails before you go to sleep at night, even though it's done. Many of you are confused about what is a reasonable amount of time to get back to someone. Many of you feel like you must do it right now. So the complaint is you don't have um, respect for your own working hours. And then those of you who work for workaholics feel like they're expecting you to work as much as they do. Many of you said you work way beyond the working hours you're actually being paid for. So, um, other people are feeling like they don't have a personality outside of their work persona, that they feel like they need to do more self-development. That's internal boundaries. So let's just start with time management, right? This is something that it's on you to manage your time. Whether you go into an office or go into a retail store to work, whether you work in any other service industry, you have to manage your own time. I think it can be really challenging to do it if you're working from home. So how do we manage our time better? The first thing is you have to have some kind of a schedule. We'd already talked about this in self-care of having some kind of a morning routine, which is great, right? We, we want to do that. But you also have to have some kind of an established work schedule so that you're aware when you've been working four, six, eight, ten hours. So you need a start time. You need a break for food. You need an end time, right? That, that's just the very basics of time management so that you're not your own worst enemy when it comes to overworking 
that that is going to be your biggest one. I'll give you some ideas on how to do that. Um, looking into the next thing that we're going to cover is self confidence and work. And what is it that you need to do to be more confident in what you're doing? Because sometimes you have the skill, but you feel insecure asserting yourself, which I totally understand, especially if you are newer to like the business world. But sometimes we're in jobs where we don't really feel like we have the skills that we need. So I always suggest continuing to hone your skills is a great idea, right? Continuing, depending on the job that you're in, to get better at whatever that job requires of you. And that can be taking courses. That can be just learning on your own. That can be looking at other people's careers that you would like to model your own career after. Because no matter how unique we all are, and you all are, there's always someone whose career trajectory might be really inspiring to you. So I always say do research and try to find models of success that either look very balanced or is it someone who's doing what it is that you want to do. That will help you have a clear path of like, wow, if that person could do it, and they did because here they are doing it, then it's possible for me to do it. And the last thing we're going to cover is about communication, right? How do you speak up? How do you be more honest in an appropriate way, right? Because talking true to your boss is one thing, and talking true to a coworker or a subordinate is another. So let's first start with building awareness, right, in what it is that you want. We're going to do you really dialing into your preferences, your desires, your limits, and your deal breakers when it comes to what you're doing for work. Really looking at how you feel about what is happening. What are the things that you're doing right now and ways that you're interacting that are really non-negotiably not good for you or you don't want to do them anymore? Now, we have to look at the job. Like, what is our job title and function? Can we opt out of those things? Because so many of the things that you guys told me in the survey that are a problem for you are things that you're sort of voluntarily doing, but you're feeling pressured to do it. So I'm giving you a bunch of questions that you can answer to get an idea of where you are in the work that you're doing. What are your preferences? What are your desires? What are your limits? And what are your deal breakers? Because that is super important. Let's move into clean agreements and silent agreements. A lot of times, just like in our family of origin, just like any system, we have a lot of silent agreements. So those are things. We're participating in something that no one's ever expressed in words, but everyone knows that's kind of the way it is. It's sort of like if you work in a corporate setting or even any business setting, there's always some kind of a corporate culture. So I want you to get really mindful of the silent agreements and the unspoken rules of engagement where you're working right now, because that's something that you want to bring it to your awareness so that if it's something that really isn't working for you, you can change it. Because with silent agreements, a lot of times when we're not speaking up about things, and even if we're just speaking up for clarity, again, it doesn't always have to be about pushback, but it's about getting really clear so that the agreements and the interactions that you're having in your professional life are clean, that you're not doing things that are making you really resentful or that you're not making assumptions. Because with silent agreements, a lot of times we're actually making assumptions about the other person, about what they expect, about what they want. And as a business owner myself, it's so much easier for me to have clean agreements with people. So if you own your own business, let's say, clean agreements when you're onboarding someone new who's going to work for you so that they know these are the hours that we work. This is what we do. This is the expectation. So that if they can't meet that expectation, then you will know that they're not a good fit for the job. A lot of times we'll take jobs and there's no clean agreement before we start working. And then we realize that there is a lot of stuff going on that we don't like 
but that we didn't have the foresight to anticipate, because how could you know? So again, asking a lot of questions if you are looking for a job so that you can get a clear idea of what is the expectation from this job? What are they actually hiring me to do? And it's the same thing with you, with people who work for you, even if you're hiring independent contractors for something. It's really getting clear about what are the agreements. A lot of you talked about working with people who are toxic, a narcissistic boss, a toxic or super negative coworker, someone who is um, talking badly about others in the work environment all the time, trying to get you into that triangle, right, where they're talking about the other person, but it puts you in the middle in a way that is uncomfortable. So there's a way that you can really opt out of those unhealthy agreements. A boss is going to be more challenging than a coworker. But I'm giving you some language here. You know, it, it's sort of like being able to say, hey, I'm on a negativity cleanse, so no no gossiping for me, right? You can we can sort of use humor to do it. Or again, keeping it light, saying, oh come on, please tell me we have something better to talk about than Bob and accounting. Right? Where You can opt out of it without sort of judging or being really hostile, but you also don't want to continue in those types of conversations because they are so exhausting and they really are distracting from what it is that you want to do. If you have the power to make your own schedule, right, if you're in that kind of a position, but you're working with other people, it's about being really clear of what your preferences are. And I'm going to give you a whole guide in the end of this for you to be able to create sort of your own rules of engagement. Because you have to know yourself, whether you own your own business or not, whether you wherever you're working, knowledge is always power. And raising awareness about your preferences and the things that are really bothering you, getting on your nerves, things that are super stressful to you, Whether you can fix them in your current situation or not, it is still all valuable information for you to know about yourself. If you're in an office setting and you have a coworker who is very chatty in the morning, but that's a time when you get a lot of work done and you want to get a lot of work done, instead of like grinning and bearing it, rolling your eyes, maybe being tempted to talk to someone else about this chatty coworker, you can say, hey, can I make a simple request that we pick this up? After 10 a.m., because right now this is a really productive time for me, I find myself most productive in the morning, so I'll ping you when I'm done. Again, allowing someone to know. So much of the time when we've been raised with disordered boundaries, which is pretty much everyone, we feel like we just have to deal with what is being served up to us, as opposed to when you can learn, and you can and you are, to assert yourself with ease, with grace, with kindness, right? Being appropriate with humor. There's all of these different ways of getting your own message across. But what will happen is how you feel about yourself shifts when you are able to do this, even if the other person isn't able to get on board with it. Just your healing and your self-confidence happens from you speaking up from you sharing, from you making a simple request. And the more you do it, the better you get at it. So for your awareness raising activity for the next 24 hours, I want you to make a list of all the people, the experiences, the feelings, the circumstances, situations that feel stressful to you and that are causing you some resentment around your workday or your workday routine, right? So that's what you're going to do for the next 24 hours. No self-judgment, right? This whole entire experience is a no judgment zone. I just want you to keep the list because once you know, you can start to pull together a plan for the areas in your work life that need your attention, that need more boundaries, that need for you to make a change, but you have to know it to do it. For the go deeper in this topic, we're going to be doing basically a business or work inventory so that you're getting super clear on not just what you don't want, right? That'll be the top of mind, but on what you do want. So you're gonna have, you're gonna fill in this little chart that I created for you so that you're really getting into the nitty gritty 
of what it is that you want, how you work best, whether you will have the power to execute it right now in your life or whether it's something that you'll have for later, it's still super important information for you to have. And then the take action is we're creating a proactive boundary guide for your professional life. So this is basically anticipating, now that you've done the whole, you know, you'll, you'll be done with the deep dive, anticipating things that have become problematic. And you can actually avoid them by being proactive. So I'm walking you through that in the take action section of this topic of boundaries and your work life. So that's a lot. You've got a lot to do. I hope that this added value to your life. I cannot wait to see what you discover. So it is time for you to get to work.